take it back in time. Spring, March 2017. Leroy and Lewis is not open yet, but we have booked a bunch of catering for South by Southwest. Brand new business, trying to source meat sustainably locally. As we have established, our ethos is going to be, there's no brisket available. Not from 44 Farms, not from Heartbrand, not from anybody that we can get yet. So rather than go back on our entire ideals, we pivoted and switched gears. What was available, was these babies. That's right, we're cooking beef cheeks this week. All right, so we're opening up this uh, five pound package of beef cheeks. There's two pieces, generally two pieces in each one. So we got kind of the main muscle here in Cole's right hand and then the kind of fat cap in his left hand. As you can see, he's just kind of peeling it back a little bit. What we wanna do is just separate the fat cap from the main muscle of the cheek and then we're just gonna clean up the edges and that's pretty much all there is to trimming. See this piece? is going to our barbacoa pile. And then this piece, we just kind of want to take off anything on the edges. Think about when you're trimming a brisket and just kind of taking off anything too small or too uh, kind of thin on the edge where it's going to burn. Just kind of want to make a little fist shape is what we're looking for. Yep, just that little kind of cut that edge off. It looks pretty good. Also gonna get uh, stuff like this that is uh, connected. This is a smaller muscle that's also attached. Uh, just by kind of a little bit of little fascia threads here. We're just going to cut that completely off. That's going to go to our barbacoa pile. And then again, we just have this kind of big fat cap that's coming off. And then the main muscle, which we're just looking to isolate and then clean up. Boom. Mm, beautiful. Looking good. As you can see, our beef cheek pile is already much smaller than our barbacoa pile. This was a problem in the very beginning when we were doing beef cheeks every single day because we would just stack, stack, stack barbacoa. So what we did was transition our menu to have beef cheeks during the weekday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and brisket uh, both week and days, Saturday and Sunday. So that is bringing less barbacoa in. Now we can kind of uh, spread it out throughout the week and then we're also serving brisket two days a week. If you wanna take a look at our barbacoa process, that was like one of the first videos we ever put on the Patreon. Go check that out. We did the whole barbacoa setup, the barbacado. I'm gonna throw these cheeks on tomorrow, on old Rusty. They're gonna get smoked for about four hours, and they're gonna get confit bath, and they're gonna get nice and tender. Delicious. POV is my favorite. on the smoker the next day I'm just gonna season these cheeks up really quick in the tub I have our Dalmatian rub that's for sale on our website it's just two parts coarse ground or 16 mesh black pepper to one part diamond crystal kosher salt I'm seasoning these really heavily because some of it is going to fall off in the smoking process and some of it is going to fall off in the confit but we really want to get as much seasoning on them as possible in the beginning so we can build up a nice crust after that, I'm just going to shake them off a little bit. Any seasoning that doesn't stick to the cheeks, we don't need. Everything that sticks to them, we'll season them perfectly. Just clap them together a little bit to shake the excess off, and we're good to go. To be honest, we could have done a little bit better of a job trimming these, but everything will work out fine at the end. As I load the cheeks onto the smoker, I'm really going to butt them up against each other, shoulder to shoulder. Once they cook, they'll start to shrink up a little bit and there will be plenty of room in between them to get some airflow. You can see exactly how close they are together. 
at the start of the cooking process, we do this to fit as many cheeks on the pit as possible. These are after about two hours in the smoke. They're running about 250, 275. You can see the crust is starting to form. They're starting to change color a little bit and they're starting to shrink up just a little bit too. After four hours, they've shrunk up quite a bit. The crust is nice and set. They're feeling really bouncy and they're temping internally at about 165. It's time to put them in the comfy. fat that we have trimmed and ground and rendered from our briskets and saved from confiting beef cheeks previously. That's why it's got some color to it. It's already super beefy and super smoky and it's just going to make our cheeks really really delicious. As you can see I don't need a lot of beef fat because the cheeks are going to give up some fat and liquid themselves and you'll see by the time we pull these off of the confit in a few hours uh, they'll be almost all entirely submerged. I'm just going to cover the cheeks with a couple layers of plastic to keep the steam and the heat in and increase the pressure in the pan itself and then I'm going to cover it with a single layer of foil so the plastic doesn't melt and then they're going to go back in the smoker for another four hours. Clayton and I are checking the tenderness of the beef cheeks after about four hours and as you can see they've given up quite a bit of fat and liquid. It looks like there's more fat in there than when I actually poured them in. They look nice and crusty, they look nice and tender, there's a bunch of steam coming out and as you'll see in a second they are perfectly tender, they're sliceable, they're not completely falling apart and these are really really delicious beef cheeks. You can just throw your finger right through that thing. They're not completely falling apart, they're not bouncy like a basketball, they're just perfectly tender like a perfectly done brisket. And they're tipping right around 200 degrees. It's the morning. Tuesday we trimmed them. Yesterday, Wednesday, went on the smoker very early. Salt and pepper, smoked for four hours. Built that crust, 165 internal, into the beef fat confit. Four hours later, four and a half hours later, 200 internal, nice and squishy, not so bouncy anymore. They kind of released a little bit of that tension. They weren't so rigid, they weren't so turgid. They were uh, just a little more soft and kind of supple. And now, after they've rested overnight, in the warmer, 160, uh, you'll see what we have here. So you also see that the beef fat that we put in there has kind of raised up a little bit as they as they kind of have relaxed that the space in between them kind of minimizes and decreases because they're not so hard and the edges aren't so kind of rough and they'll uh, just kind of relax into each other and then the beef fat will kind of overtake them. So we'll reach down in here. As you can see yesterday, it took a little bit of effort to kind of poke a finger through, but now it really does not. 
They are just super, super tender. I could just pull this apart if I wanted to. I could crush it with my hand if I wanted to, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna slice into one. I'm gonna try to find a nice big one. So slicing the cheeks, there's kind of a spider grain to them. It almost kind of spreads out from the center or from like one side of it. So there's no real wrong way to slice any of these. We just try to find the longest kind of tip to tip edge and then start to slice from there. Also the collagen within the cheeks, which is gonna give it that kind of stickiness, that yumminess, that's also gonna help hold them together a little more when we're slicing. So if you slice you know, just a little bit off of the grain, then they will still stay together in a nice slice. So here we go. We're looking for about finger size pieces, so we'll probably slice this cheek just in two. We'll go one of those, one of those, and one of those. So we'll go right here. And just like a brisket, we're not trying to press down, really just trying to slice through like a slice, of, like a loaf of bread. Just cut right through. And then here we have our beautiful cheeks. Look at that, look at that chunk. So tender, so juicy, so delicious. It's just as good as the first time I had it. So as you can see, this kind of stickiness, that's gelatin that has converted from collagen. And in order to make that conversion, you need some kind of moisture present in the cooking process, or else they're just gonna get really tight and they're just gonna be like almost like a baseball, like really, really tight and they're never ever gonna break down. So that's why we use the confit. That's why uh, a lot of times when you see people cooking barbacoa beef cheeks, they're maybe putting a little bit of liquid, a little bit of water in there, the banana leaves help introduce some moisture to steam it because you need that moisture present to convert the collagen to gelatin to make that really nice and sticky beef cheek that kind of gives you that little stringy, that little pull right there. Oh yes, that's what you want. There you have it folks, uh, this is the Premier bite. This is basically how we test all of our beef cheeks so you know we can see if the barbecue sauce is tasting good, if the kimchi is right and ready, and if the beef cheeks are nice and tender and smoky and delicious and moist like we want them. This is the fold over, right? Normally in barbecue, you've got your slice of white bread, your brisket, your barbecue sauce, maybe a little pickles and onion. Here we've got the Martin's potato bread, the beef cheek, the house-made kimchi, the beef barbecue sauce, all of it works really particularly well together. The kimchi, nice and crunchy, nice and tangy and spicy. It's kind of cutting through that really rich beef cheek, fat and gelatin. And then you've got the bright colored, uh, really balanced but tangy and spicy and sweet barbecue sauce with the underlying earthy notes from the beets. And it all just comes together into a delicious little foldy. If you come to the truck, this is how I recommend you eat this. Mm. It's barbecue, it's Texas barbecue, it's new school barbecue, it's properly messy, smoky, eat it with your hands. Mm. It's so good.